Hold up your right hand and repeat after me. I will never ship an app without running it through instruments first. It doesn't take long. It's not difficult. And I promise it will pay off. Your user interfaces will be smoother. Your code will run faster and you'll avoid wasting memory. All using a tool that's completely free and you already have installed. I have, predictably, only touched briefly on the many features of Instruments, Xcode and the simulator here. But I hope I've inspired you to learn more. Instruments can tell you exactly what each CPU core is doing at any given time. It can tell you when every object was created and when it was destroyed, along with what code triggered it. And it can even simulate user interface interactions to help you stress test your apps. At the same time, I also snuck in a few more techniques for you to try on your own apps. Layer shadows, core graphics clipping, and how UI image has an automatic cache for when you need it. So all in all, another great technique project, and you've learned some important skills that will be useful in every iOS project you make from now on. And remember, anyone can sit through a tutorial, but it takes actual work to remember what was taught. It's my job to make sure you take as much from these tutorials as possible. I've prepared another short review to help you check your learning. You can find a link to this on the main Hacking with Swift review page. Once again, it's time for your challenge. One of the best ways to learn is to write your own code as often as possible. So here are three ways you can put your newfound knowledge to use straight away to make sure you fully understand what's going on. First, go through Project 30 and remove all the force unwraps. Now, implicitly unwrapped optionals are not the same thing as force unwraps. You're welcome to fix the implicitly unwrapped optionals too, but that's a bonus task. Second, pick any of the previous 29 projects that interest you and try running it through the allocations instrument. Can you find any objects that are persistent when they should have been destroyed? And third, for a tougher challenge, take the image generation code out of self at Generate all the images when the app first launches and use those smaller versions instead. For bonus points, combine the get documents directory method I introduced back in project 10, so you save the resulting cache to make sure it never happens again.